What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and in this video I want to build upon a video that I recently made about why exercise variation is not necessary for progress. If you watch that video, you'll recall that I cited, you know, the Bulgarian weightlifting team as one example of a program that was highly successful in developing international champions that featured very, very low exercise variation, even in terms of doing, you know, lighter intensity rep work. However, in this video, I'm going to go in the opposite direction and try to talk about benefits that you could potentially get from including exercise variety in your program. So in that, in that video, I emphasized pretty heavily that doing the same thing over and over again, especially at high intensities, is a recipe for increasing injury rate. So training, decreasing training monotony is something I've talked about in the previous video, so I won't discuss it too much, but suffice it to say that one of the best ways to lower your injury rate right off the bat is to include exercise variation, and that alone is good enough reason for most of you. However, there's some other ones. So the first one that I want to talk about is hypertrophy. So I think this is pretty much indisputable that certain exercises per unit of volume are better at inducing hypertrophy than others. And here's what I mean by that. We know from all sorts of literature that the, the, the range of motion, the stretch that you get in the muscle at the bottom, say, of a dumbbell bench press is very important for the hypertrophic, the hypertrophic stimulus that you're going to get. Now, if you compare a dumbbell bench press to, say, a powerlifting style bench press with an arch back in a very short range of motion, like I said, per unit of volume, the dumbbell press is probably going to result in better hypertrophy gains. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you could just take a bodybuilder who's never done anything but leg press and leg extensions and who has huge quads and they would instantly be the best squatter in the world because there's more to it than simply how big your muscle is. However, anecdotally, throughout the history of powerlifting, most lifters would tell you that a combination approach works extremely well. And I think the reason for this is that you can get, like I said, with similar or even less volume, you can get a similar or better hypertrophic, hypertrophic stimulus than if you did only competition lift work. So sure, on the one hand, you could do, let's say, six days of competition benching per week to get all your volume in. But that is going to increase training monotony. The loads that you're going to have to handle are going to be quite high. And there's going to be a bigger injury risk than if you're using dumbbell bench press in combination with, say, your straight bar um, competition style benching. So we get that decreased injury risk and potentially the hypertrophy that you get from being able to do, you know, le less overall work with the barbell and more work with, with dumbbells, which are less damaging for your joints, less psychologically stressful and all that adds up to a better training effect in combination than doing only barbell work alone. However, that's just theoretical. I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of research that really demonstrates that's the case, but almost every power lifter out there would probably tell you that in their experience, that's true. So again, the reason number one is that you can use lighter weights and less taxing movements to get similar or better hypertrophic response when you combine it with the um, competition lift. So you're still getting skill specific work as well. Now, the next reason I would say is, is probably to attack weak points, all right? This is one that most of you guys are familiar with, and that is this idea that uh, certain movements are better at addressing your weak point than the competition lift itself. Now, I think this is a little bit off base. The, the best way to attack your weak point is to do the competition lift itself, and the reason for that is that the competition lift itself stresses your weak point in exactly the way that it's going to be stressed in the competition and and your your weak point your area in the range of motion where you can produce the least amount of force is what's going to hold back your lift right you're not it doesn't matter if you could do a thousand pound rack pull above the knee if you can't break 600 pounds off of the floor at least not in power lifting where the goal is the highest one rep maximum through the full range of motion so i think one of the big benefits though of say weak point training is that it can reinforce good movement patterns so you could you could have um, things like let's say pin squats which punish someone who has early hip rise in the squat but the other and probably most important variable is that it potentially allows you to get the same stimulus in your weakest area of the range of motion while using less load and or at least less range of motion and less stress so here's what we mean by that right Let's say that somebody is weakest 
right out of the hole in the squat. So you have them doing something, maybe something like uh, pause squats right below their weak point or pin squats like I already mentioned. And they're going to be able to use less weight on this variation, of course, right? That's kind of the point. But even with less weight, this variation still makes the hardest part of the movement their particular weak point. And so the idea is that you can get a similar stimulus for that weakest range of motion despite using less tonnage, a less, um, a less heavy exercise in terms of absolute load, and a less stressful exercise in general. And what this means is that per unit of volume done throughout your entire training, you're getting a, a better response. So if you have a maximum amount of volume that you can recover from, it helps to get a similar stimulus or even a greater stimulus using an exercise variation that requires you to do less volume. All right. Now, again, this is just a theory as well. But a lot of people would say that it's true, that when they include weak point training, despite, you know, maybe using less weight on those movements, they make progress faster than if they had just done all competition lift for their entire volume profile. All right. And now the last one is just simply a novelty factor. All right. So one of the people that describes this best, I think, is Mike to And he says that there's a diminishing marginal return or, he, you know, there's potentially a diminishing marginal return for every time that you um, introduce the exact same stimulus. So, you know, let's say that you're doing five sets of competition squats, right, in a workout. Well, the first set might be responsible for 80% of the gains that you make. And then every set after that produces a less and less of an adaptive response. Well, the idea behind this theory is that instead of doing, say, a second or a third or a fourth session in the week with the competition lift, you can use a novel movement and get... Um, a higher adaptive response simply because it is a new stimulus. So it's true that, you know, if you're only going to do one set, then the competition lift itself is going to have a higher um, adaptive stimulus. But if you're doing, you know, 20 sets of a competition squat, maybe it's true that doing 19 sets of the competition squat and one set of pin squats adds up to a greater overall stimulus due to the novelty of those pin squats. So those are the big three reasons, guys, um, that I think that exercise variation could potentially benefit you. The overall number one reason is so that you don't get hurt, reduce training monotony. But the first reason that we talked about is hypertrophy. Certain movements for, are, are better per unit of volume at inducing hypertrophy, despite beating up your joints less and being less psychologically stressful. And bodybuilders have known this for ages, and that's why they use a variety of movements. Um, number two is attacking weak points. So the idea that uh, you can attack your weak point just as hard as the competition movement or potentially harder um, with, with a less stressful exercise, with less volume, with less tonnage, using a variation that makes that part of the movement even harder, okay? Now the third one is the simple novelty factor. Instead of doing the same thing over and over again and continuing to get a diminished response from that same stimulus, you can do a slightly different movement and get a, a stronger response because it is a fresh stimulus in and of itself. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> Even though exercise variation is not necessary, I think almost everybody who, who should still be using some sort of exercise variation in their powerlifting training. And these are some of the reasons why. As always, my friends, good luck with your training and have a great day. Peace.